Jason, did you get it? No? But, but did you get the, if you use my equation, did you get 2.28%? I did a different little bit. But I know how you, you guys got it, right? Got this 2.28? Don't use the calculator, use the Excel. So, right? So, so you just, see this is a price. But this is supposed to be the money goes back to the, the company, but the company has to pay 7% uh, for fees provided, um, for services provided by the investment bank. And also because there's a, there's a tax um, deduction for interest payment. Remember, sales minus interest payment, um, and then interest is paid before tax. So the amount of interest will be helping the firm to have some benefits to reduce the amount of tax they pay. It's called tax shield, or tax benefit of interest. So, so there's a, the firm should be uh, using more debt because it will reduce the amount of tax they pay because of the interest benefit of tax. It's tax deductible. So 2.28%. So here, so we got this 2.28%. Now the last thing we, we need to know, KE, cost of equity. So for cost of equity, uh, for cost of equity, we can do both ways. If we know cost of equity is just the cost to the firm, but to the stockholders, it's returns they earned. So we have two ways to get a return investors can earn. One is using CAPM model we learned in chapter six. Another one is dividend growth model we learned in chapter eight. So cost of capital, cost of equity, either use dividend. Then this is the equation. Uh, the price given, the price, uh, the price and subtract the flotation cost and divided by D1, dividend of next period, and plus the growth rate of the company's cost of equity. And we can use the CAPM model. If it's a CAPM model, there's no place to plug in the flotation cost. So returns to the stockholders based on CAPM model, that would be the cost of equity. Now, <coughs> Uh, let's calculate it. Let's use dividend growth model. Like in the calculator, I'm using the dividend growth model to do this cost of equity. Now, uh, let's do that. Uh, we need to know D1. D1 is the next period dividend of Walmart. We did it last time, right? Walmart increased by one cent every quarter next year. So it's 50, how much is it? Uh, Walmart dividend history. So let's calculate the next year's dividend. So it should be $54, right? So let's do this using CAPM model. So it's just D1, um, D1 over price minus quotation plus G. So this is the equation. So how much is D1? D1 should be next year's 54 cents each quarter times 4. The stock price of Walmart is how much? Uh, 108. Let's use 7% flotation. Let's use 7%. 7% and, and also we need to use uh, calculate the G growth rate G uh, for to get the G how to get the G uh, we can do this ROE multiplied by 1 minus payout ratio uh, we can find the ROE and payout ratio from, uh, for example, uh, fewits.com.
Anyhow, let me just put it down here. Uh, dividend should be price. And rotation is 7%. Uh, we don't know the growth rate. The growth rate is ROE. Finwiz.com, Walmart, okay, so this is Walmart, let's see, its ROE is 7.1, so uh, ROE is 7.1%. And this payout ratio is, can we find the payout ratio? Yeah. Uh, where? It's on the same, um, on second to last. Uh, The, it, it was, right oh yeah, yeah, uh, no, payout ratio is, that's too high, because 11.8, 20, that, that means they pour, they pay back more than they're, uh, they earned, they pay more, um, they pay more than, like, uh, their, if we do this, I will get a wrong number, because the growth rate would be negative. But anyhow, let's just assume uh, usually the company, let's uh, say, uh, let's use the average. Payout ratio. Uh, payout ratio. Now let's use last year, 62%. Now let's, let's use payout ratio. Payout ratio, 62%. So, uh, so let's calculate the growth rate. So it should be 7.1. That's too low. Two point seven percent. That's what I got based on that. So equals to two point seven percent. This is G gross rate. Yeah, so it makes sense, right? So, so we're using the equation to get the G. So the G is uh, 2.7. 2 okay, so this is the cost of equity. Uh, 3.8711 based on this. So cost of, uh, cost of equity should be 4.8343. So the equation is just this one. D1 is uh, 54 cents times 4 divided by P0 minus 7% and plus this G. So this is a KE. And then we plug into this 38% multiplied by cost of debt plus 62% um, multiplied by this. And um, so we got whack. So this is how it is calculated. So got it. So you see, uh, cost of ca cost of debt is just returns to the bondholders, yield to maturity. Cost of equity is just returns to the stockholders. We can use dividend growth model or capital model to calculate it. But for debt, you have to consider flotation cost and also the tax rate for dividend. You, for a stock, you have to consider flotation cost. So what we got is uh, the cost of the cost of uh, the BCC is three point eight seven one one. So if you go to my website, there's a, a there's a class. Uh, <coughs> you go to my class uh, last. I think it's uh, eighteen. It's either eighteen or seventeen. Uh, there's 
there is a WACC calculation by a group of students doing the taking the invest investment uh, competition. That's their document. Let's see. Yeah. Um, Should be seventeen. Yeah. yeah so, <clears throat> if you go to here, they did the Hertz WACC in this. Uh, this is this is how they did it. If you go to my uh, class website, look for four thirty five as. 17th semester, 17th semester, you see this is their competition is uh, studying Hertz. So this is a group they won and they, 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 they got the championship for uh, Florida State, Florida. And then so this is how they calculate the Hertz WCC. Oh yeah, they're using total debt. We may, we may should use total debt also. But anyhow, oh, they're using market value of equity. Okay, so you can follow their steps to calculate WACC for Amazon. So we're using all based on the book values. Their way is better based on the market value of equity and debt. So, so this is how to calculate WACC. They're using the CAPM model to calculate the cost of equity. Risk free rate, beta, market risk premium, calculate cost of equity. Anyhow, so this is how to do that. Uh, <coughs> so if you use this calculator, if you use, there's another component for WCC, it's called preferred stock. But since like in our chapter, we're not going to be considering preferred stock. So what you can do, you can just put, if you use this calculator, you just put dividend for zero. And anything else, you can fill it up with any numbers. But if you put zero for dividend, and then it will just give cost of preferred stock for a value of zero. So, and that's all. For the amount of preferred stock, you just put zero here. Yeah, so, so and then it will calculate it and, and give you the answer. Uh, here is a template in Excel. If you want the Excel template, you, you can open it and use it. So we got 3.8711. We should use the market value of equity instead of the book value of equity. But anyhow, and this is, this is how you do that. So and then if the firm can invest the money more wisely, like Amazon was doing, so it cost them 14.27% to raise the capital in the market, but they can get back 31.32%. So it's a big, big gain for their, their, their money. So big profit for their money. And of course, Apple is doing is the best among the three of them. It costs them 7.58%, they get back 36.58%. So, this is uh, the, the next one is like major industry. Their uh, cost of cost of equity is how much? Cost of debt is how much? Uh, the debt ratio is how much? Tax rate and cost of capital. The highest one is uh, the highest one is one chemical company ten point seven eight percent. The lowest one is those financial service company two point nine nine percent. And utility firms use rely heavily on debt financing. Debt financing, yes. And this is a company with the highest and lowest WCC in 2016. So the highest WCC can be uh, as high as 12.7 percent. Of course, Amazon is even higher than that. And the low, the low one could be 4 percent, as low as 4 percent. Petco Holding. So anyhow, uh, this, is, this is how we do that. You see, uh, if 
to figure out the firm value, so we should discount free cash flow at the WACC as a discount rate. Free cash flow is the money the company can earn from the project. WACC is cost of capital. It's a discount rate. So we can figure out the values of the firm this way. And then, so we see this is a big picture. If beta is given, cost of debt is the same, but cost of equity, we use capital, uh, CAPM model to do that. If dividend is given, then we use this to get the WACC. So this is a general equation. E is equity, V is the firm value, D is debt. Okay, so this is a this is a general way to do that. So do you have any problems? Now I have a question. Every firm can raise capital at a much lower rate from a um, debt market, from, from borrowing in the debt market. Why they don't do why they don't rely on hundred percent? Um, financing in the debt in the debt market. Why they don't finance 100 percent from the debt market? Why actually they raise more capital in the stock market, which is more costly, instead of just 100 percent financing through debt market, which is the cheapest way? Can we borrow? Like each time we need money, can we always just go to the bond market and borrow? No one wants to lend it to us, right? If, uh, if you have a lot of debt, and people know you have a lot of debt, no one will lend you any money anymore, right? Because the, the more debt the firm is carrying, it will be perceived as a very risky firm. The more risky it is, the cost of borrowing will be higher. And also, it will reach to a point like no one wants to borrow, lend money to you anymore because it's so risky. You get so much of the leverage, and, uh, and people will be suspicious of your future, of your operations in the future. So the company cannot rely on that for uh, all, it, all of its capital needs. So it has to be a combination of debt and equity. Equity, even though it's, it's more expensive, but however, it, there's no obligations. The company can uh, reduce the dividend, but the company cannot reduce the coupon or interest payment or cancel. The company can cancel completely the dividend payment, but the company cannot cannot eliminate, eliminate cannot reduce or uh, cancel its interest payment. So its obligations is uh, there. It's in part of the contract. So the company will be in trouble if they don't pay back to the, the lenders. But the company will not be in trouble if they don't pay back to the shareholders for dividend. So, so they cannot. Uh, why tax rate cannot reduce firms' cost of equity? Tax, there is a tax benefit for interest, for borrowing. Uh, there is no tax benefit for issuing stocks. Why is that? You can think about this, dividend is paid before tax or after tax. Remember the income statement? Yeah. After, right? Because we have sales minus all costs, including interest payment. Uh, and then that's your taxable reliability, right? And then you pay tax. Uh, and then that will be your net income. Uh, after you calculate the net income, and then it's time to pay dividend. So dividend is paid after the <coughs> dividend is paid after. So uh, for example, let's look at the income statement. So where's interest? Where's dividend? So this is the income statement. Where's the interest? The interest is paid before or after tax. Before, right? Before. Where's dividend? Dividend is paid after or before that tax. It's after, right? So you, you pay, the company can pay a lot of dividend, but they still have to pay a very high amount of tax. But if the company pay a lot of interest pay payment, and then the company then don't need to pay so much in tax. So dividend will not reduce the, the amount of tax. So there's no tax benefits associated with dividend. 
but for interest, since it's paid before tax, the more the more money the firm borrows, the more interest they have to pay, the less tax they have to pay. It reduces a lot more um, expenses for the firm. So, so this is this is why. Okay, now let's do. If you don't have any questions, uh, let's do this exercise. And then we'll work on the homework. I, I, I got several questions there for the homework. Now let's try uh, this exercise. You can, whatever, whatever the way you feel more comfortable is, you can use the calculator as a way just to confirm your answers. Now let's give it a try. Um, $10 million through debt, 5% of coupon tenures, $950 is the bond price. Rotation is 7%. Tax is It should be 9.84%, I remember. Let's see. You got 9.84? Um. If you use the calculator for preferred stock, just put zero for dividend, but you have to put the number for each of the cell. Otherwise, you won't get the answer. Nine point eight four. So it's ten million and twenty million. So it's So this is Raw, it should be 9.84. I remember. So, how much you got? Three point? Uh. So, after tax cost of debt, you got 3.9 something. Maybe it was wrong because the calculator sometimes has problems. So don't don't trust so much on that calculator. So I realize sometimes it gives problems. Uh, here it is. Let's just copy the whole equation to Excel. Yeah, it is right. Three point nine eight. So the calculator is right, 3.98, so 15%, so, so the answer is 11.33. Now 11.33, if you do the 
calculate, if you use them, doing that by hand, you see this is the equation. Uh, a third, why it's a third? Because 10 million from bond market, 20 million from equity market, totals 30 million. So a third is from debt. Uh, two third is from the equity. So KD, you use this equation. So we have to subtract the flotation and there's a tax deduction. And KE, cost of equity, there's only flotation deduction, but there's no flotation and no tax benefits. So there's no tax. And WCC just, just, just that. So if you follow the steps here, so, so do we have any questions for this chapter? So this is a weighted average cost of capital. Yes. Can I see the um, calculator? OK. Yeah, this is the whole picture. So I, I prefer stock here because the whole picture should be a company can raise from three market, bond market, stock market, and prefer stock market. So just in our, uh, in our textbook, there's no preferred stock as um, part of this calculation. So the yellow part will be calculated automatically. Eleven point three three percent, right? All right. So, are you guys ready for the homework? We got some questions to try. Um, it, it will probably take us uh, twenty minutes to get it done. Tristan, are you ready? Okay, yes. Yeah, um, you see, I can get it done really quick, so that's why I don't want to. Yeah, give it a try, you can. I don't have any volunteers. Any volunteers? Alex, you want to try? Jenna, do you want to try again? No. <laughs> See, Tristan has you. <laughs> so we don't have any volunteers. You ladies want to try? No? I, I'm confused by the one. By I'm which one? I'm confused by like half of the homework. Which one you are confused? Number one. Yeah, so where where is your let, let's give it a try number one let's just use this calculator mm -hmm. first and then let's try the Excel okay so what is the price let's just clear it up for everything let's just uh, get a new one yeah okay so price is 1075 okay so years left 20 okay coupon uh, 9.2 so in 92.5. No, 9.25. Percent. Multiply by 1,000. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. See, a uh, coupon rate is given. Use coupon rate multiplied by 1,000. So it has to be, has to be between, like, for under $100, because coupon rate yearly is under uh, 10%. So it cannot be a percentage number. So the tax rate? Tax rate is how much? 40%. OK. Flotation? How much? OK. Oh, OK. Uh, so if it doesn't say, we let's just assume it's zero. Okay. Oh yeah, this is there's another problem. This is some annually. So this is this is uh, some annually. So uh, I had two calculators. One is for some annual coupon bond because it will be different. So so you should open the some annual one. And then uh, let's do that again. One oh seven five twenty right? Mm -hmm. Coupon is. And um, 40 mm -hmm. and 0. Which one? 
the yeah. No, but but uh, no need to multiply by two. No, you divide. Yeah. You divide by two. Nine point two five percent. Yeah, let, let's let's use Excel first. I I worried about this calculator might not be right, but but let's see. Uh, for let's see. Uh, cost of debt. Cost of debt. So we need to use coupon. Coupon is ninety. Ninety two point five, and uh, M per is twenty. Yeah, but but we can do that later, and. Uh, Price is okay. So cost of debt should be rate um, m per times two um, ninety two point five divided by two. Future value would be a thousand. Yeah, um, and then. And then once you get it, yeah, one minus forty percent times two it has to be times two. I yeah, I got. Yeah, that calculator is right. That calc five point oh eight. So if we use this calculator, you see this is your input. We got five point zero seven nine. So this is this is what we got using five point seven nine four. It's exactly the same. Uh, the calculator. Yeah, the calculator, you don't have to divide it by two. So that's why I had two calculators there, just because you have to multiply by two for the sum annual one. So the calculator is right, but if you do this, tax 40%, 0%. This is the cost of that. If you use the calculator, remember, uh, just put the whole year's coupon. So, right? But you have to use the summer annual coupon bond and the white calculator. The difference will be very tiny. 